Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll be going through the actor scale up and scale down under biochemical and bioprocess engineering. So we'll talk about the reactors, why it is required for scaling up and scaling down. So let's get started with this video. So there are some of the factors that we need to consider for scale up. So initially we start off, start with the scale up first. So there are factors as you can see. So there are lots of factors actually. So we will go through one by one each one of them. So first of all, the one of the factors is height to diameter ratio. So the height to diameter ratio of 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 is to be maintained. Also height to diameter ratio remains constant and then the surface to volume ratio decreases. So this is one of the factors uh, Factors are facts that we need to remember while uh, calculating or manipulating the things. Also it decreases the surface aeration to oxygen supply and dissolve carbon dioxide removal. And in case of shared sensitive cultures such as animal cells, it can be critical because of restriction on stirring and sparsion. So these are uh, these four points are related to height and diameter ratio. So we need to carefully check the height and diameter ratio and manipulate it thus so that uh, it has a proper oxygen supply and the aeration is maintained perfectly. Also in case of shear sensitive cultures as we uh, just read and mostly mostly in case of animal cells, it can be critical because of restrictions on stirring and sparging. So coming to the second point, which is the reactor wall growth. So this is something that is very important when we are considering cell uh, scale up. So cell adhesion to surfaces can have altered metabolism. So there are uh, times when the uh, medium or the microbes get stick or get stuck on the uh, glass walls. So it causes it may alter the metabolism of the entire reaction also lead to mass transfer limitations. So it may lead to uh, mass transfer limitations so the all the uh, the entire mass width that has been allowed to grow uh, we may not get the output as per we have expect, uh, expected uh, due to growth on the wall or something related to uh, so something related to the growth of the microbes on some other medium also data obtained in a smaller small fermenter may be unreliable in predicting culture uh, response in a larger fermenter so definitely a larger fermenter is preferred over a small uh, fermenter as data obtained from a small fermenter may not be that much reliable uh, whereas a larger fermenter gives an accurate reading. So these are some of the facts that you need to remember while uh, considering for scale up factors. So the first factor was height to diameter ratio. The second factor was reactor wall growth. So these are some of the uh, reasonings to the reactor wall growth, the height to diameter ratio. So why do we why do we need to maintain all of these? So why these factors are considered? Moving on with this. So there's a case study that we have, have made a point for this. So a stored tank diameter has been increased by a factor of five resulted in a 125 fold increase in volume and the height to diameter ratio was maintained constant. So this is a normal study or an experiment being conducted on a stirred tank bioreactor so in which the diameter was increased by factors of 5 and it resulted in a 125 fold increase in volume so it resulted in huge uh, a lot of increase in volume due to uh, increase in its diameter so in this case uh, it has been observed that uh, when we have increased it by factors of 5 the height to diameter ratio was perfectly maintained. So this is uh, this is one of the one of the instances that I have shown here. Uh, this is how we can or manipulate things so that the height to diameter ratio is perfectly maintained. Because this is this is the more first and the foremost thing that we need to maintain uh, whenever we are considering for a bioreactor. So coming to the scale up, uh, some of the parameters on which it is based up. So some of the parameters which is based on it is the constant power input. So definitely a power input is required whenever we are considering any reaction. So power input is given by P O by V. So this is a power input uh, formula. Also a constant liquid circulation inside the vessel. So a liquid circulation, uh, a constant liquid supply should be maintained. 
and a pumping rate of the impeller per volume is given by Q by V. So I'll be uh, helping out with all of these uh, annotations Q and V and P0 and V. So also the third uh, parameter which is the constant shear at impeller tip. So at the impeller tip there's a constant shear which is given by NDI. And also we have the Reynolds number which is given by NDI square uh, mu by uh, sorry, this is uh, phi by mu. So this is the Reynolds number which is given by. So this is the Reynolds number that we have that you may have studied in your junior classes. So this is the Reynolds number. This is the shear at impeller tip. This is the called the constant liquid circulation rate, and this is the constant. Uh, this is a constant power input. So these are some of the four parameters that on which the scale up is maintained. So with this so i have another case study for you which shows all of the interdependence of scalar parameters so we have the energy input the energy input per volume the impeller rotation number the impeller diameter the pump rate of impeller pump rate of impeller volume maximum impeller speed then all speed so all of these are given in these ways so these are denoted by such as uh, power is in, in energy is inputted by p0 energy input is p0 by v like that all of these are denoted these ways and in a small fermenter we are considering this which has a size of about 80 liters so these are some of the values of it and these are some of the uh, values for the uh, parameters which is this is this one is the energy input one this is the impeller rotation number this is the maximum uh, impeller speed and this is the Reynolds number so this is a sort of a chart that is made for a particular fermenter or a bioreactor uh, considering all the four parameters so this is the first parameter the second this is the third this is the fourth parameter and this is the small fermenter which is of capacity 80 liters and this is all the designations that we have just studied about so this is a sort of a chart that is made for a bioreactor in case considering for scale up only for scale up this is the one for scale up that we need to consider and these are all of the four parameters and how these are calculated so moving on with this so there are some more time constants as you can see so there are flow rate diffusion oxygen transfer heat transfer mixing growth conversions can be uh, conversion processes can be growth chemical reaction substrate consumption heat production and these are given by these sort of equations as you can see so some time constants are given by these so growth is 1 by mu chemical reaction is c, r, c by small r substrate consumption is cs by r max and heat production is p by cp delta k t by r delta h so these are some of the time constants so this is not a pretty much important slide so you can just give it a read for your information all right so these are some of the time constants for the scale up theory so moving on so there are we got some more uh, time constants for you which is the oxygen transfer circulation of the liquids and some more of the volumes that we have also time constants were applied to a 20 meter cube fermenter during glu uh, gluconic acid production so this is something that is related with this so this is not a pretty important slide but just for your reference it's given so moving on, uh, moving on with this. So another we have something which is the measured oxygen concentration with a reactor. So the heterogeneous environment cells pass periodically through anaerobic reactions after cellular mechanism. So these are there are some of the differences between anaerobic and aerobic cells or microbes when the scalar process is considered. So we need to take care of that, and I'll be covering all of the differences between anaerobic and aerobic. Uh, uh, microbes and all of the heterogeneous environments and all of the different sort of environments on which scale up and scale down theory will be considered. I'll be making a separate video very soon on this. So moving on with this. So talking about common scale up rules. So coming to the last part of the scale up, which is the common scale up rules that we need to remember in short, which is the constant power to volume ratio needs to be maintained. A constant power to ratio or uh, power to volume ratio is very important. Also, a constant KLA or the volumetric mass transfer coefficient should be maintained. A constant tip speed is important. 
also combination of mixing time and Reynolds number is important and a maintenance of constant substrate or product level so constant uh, so a maintenance of constant substrate or product level is important also usually dissolved oxygen concentration should be maintained to a minimal value and not to a higher value so moving on so talking about factors to be considered for scale up so this is the mixing time in a reactor so these are coming to the some of the technicalities that are involved in a mixing to for mixing time in a reactor which is given by tm so tm is the mixing time which equals to the tk so tk is a constant and which is a function of the impeller type placement and vessel design so tk will be a constant all right and v is the vessel volume so tm equals tk into v to the power of 0 0.3 so this is an important uh, formula, just a single formula for uh, scale up. So this is just a single formula, which is the TM calculation of TM or the mixing time in a reactor. So more so coming to the practical uh, practical operational boundaries in a bioreactor. So uh, so this is a graph ag uh, uh, against uh, uh, agitation versus aeration so aeration is the x-axis and agitation is the y-axis so this is a sort of a graph that is made so these are conditions valid for aerated and agitated systems as you can see here it's written here so this is something that is this particular part goes to the co2 effect this is the part that goes to the uh, cell damage this is the part this is for cost maintenance this is for foaming this is for poor mixing this is the o2 limitation so this is this is a sort of a graph that has been designed through a bioreactor through taking a bioreactor as a model design and just uh, so just taking a bioreactor at its power level by maintaining all of its volume to surface ratio and everything maintaining at its proper uh, mixing times so this is a graph that is made out of the agitation and aeration systems uh, so this is a more or less a circular graph so we need to remember its labeling such as where which one occurs where so in this case the upper part is the cell damage the lower part is the poor mixing the this part is the cross uh, cost maintenance and the your rightmost part is the foaming and your left leftmost part is the co2 effect and a little down we have the o2 limitation so we have the o2 limitation again so this was some of the factors that we need to consider for scale up so coming to the last type of which is the factors that are responsible for scale up is the variation in substrate or uh, variation in dissolved oxygen concentration varying mixing time analysis and estimation of varying time constants variation in the uh, residence time distribution so this is something important for factors that we consider for scale down so sorry for that we have moved to scale down now uh, so uh, so moving on with scale down. So these are some of the important factors that we need to remember for scale down. So for now we are so for so long we were studying for scale up. So scale up was an important factor everywhere as we know. So scale up scale up is important whenever we need to increase volumes and cause in a generally a large fermenter we get equal uh, we get a good amount of a uh, suitable or reliable values. So scale down is this in which variation is substrate. So some of the factors is variation in substrate. If there is a lot of variation or mutation occurring in a substrate, so we, that time we need to maybe scale down. Or variation in dissolved oxygen concentration. Also variation in mixing time analysis. So due to improper mixing, maybe we need to scale down. Also estimation of varying time constants. So estimation of time constants can be done in a small fermenter in a better way. So this is one of the facts. All right. Also variation in the residence time distribution. So these are all related to the variation, some or the variation of the other. Uh, so these are mostly related with variations of one or other factors. So also comparison with large scale reactors. So this is one of the important factor that we need to uh, cover, which is the comparison with large scale reactors. So scale down apparatus are constructed specifically to mimic a known piece of equipment. So scale down apparatus are constructed specifically to mimic a known piece of equipment, which is the large reactor systems. Also small, small scale reactors do not mimic temperature heterogeneities as in larger scale. 
So definitely scale down apparatus are something that is equivalent to a large scale reactor and small scale do not obviously because it's pretty it does not have that much volume and size too and that's why it cannot accumulate that much amount of temperature and heterogeneities. So that's why it's a comparison with large scale uh, reactor. Uh, scale down is considered more or less a large scale reactor. All right. So this. So talking about the importance of small scale reactors. So what are the importance of small scale reactors? Uh, so cause small scale we are studying because in a large reactor when the scale is put down or when the scale of 100 is put down to 10. So the 10 volume which is present which can be carried out in a small scale reactor as well. So why do so that's why we are studying about small scale reactors. So small scale reactors has its own uses and its pros and cons. So that's why we are studying about scale down also as. So we talked about uh, large scale. So large scale is more or less a pretty, uh, basically a scale down is a mimic of the large scale reactor. But small scale is even important because whenever the volume or the surface area is uh, decreased, so the reaction can be taken place in a small scale reactor because of its less size and space. So talking about the small scale reactors, so it's basically the estimation, estimate the system's response, which can be growth rate, product formation, formation of contaminating byproducts. Also changes in medium composition. As you can see, introduction of modified production stain, use of different inoculum preparation, introduction of new anti-form agents, testing of O2 and CA2 tolerance, pH failure, oxygen probe failure, and compress compressor air failure. So these are some of the importance of air uh, scale, uh, small scale reactors. So there are a lot of uh, things, uh, plus points that we need to, that we probably need to remember or keep in mind. So there is estimation of systems response, uh, changes in medium composition, introduction of modified production strain, use of different inoculum medium, also bringing in new antiform agents and testing of O2 and CO2 tolerance, pH failure or an oxygen proof failure. Moving on with this. So this is a scale down reaction reactor apparatus setup. All right, so this is a large scale reactor. This is a small scale reactor. Or else is both are linked to each other as you can see. So this how the large scale reactor becomes a small scale reactor. So this is the vessel and after decreasing its uh, all of its oxygen levels and decreasing its uh, all of its spaces and surface area it becomes a small scale reactor. So basically the amount of O2 or the oxygen level that is present that is decreased and the amount of volume to surface layer volume to uh, a uh, surface ratio is decreased and therefore it is termed as a small scale reactor by decreasing its volume by uh, loading its oxygen levels. So this is about a small scale reactor and then at last we have two main numericals for you again for your practice just for your practice and if you cannot solve these numericals you may just type in type your doubts in the comment section I will help you out with the solution and if there are too many doubts I will make a separate video for all of these numericals and more such numericals on these topics. So if you have any doubts under this topic, you may just type in your doubts in the comment section. I'll definitely help you out. So let's just keep this video till here. Uh, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.